In this lesson, we're going to look at the last five identities. These are called double angle identities. Similar to the addition and subtraction identities, there's quite a few of them. They're also on the formula sheet. But you'll notice that there are three for cosine, while only one for sine and for tan. Okay, so to start with, let's get comfortable with them a little bit. Um, so it says here, that just like we started the last lesson, right, each expression has a single trig ratio. So you're looking at this and saying, which one of those is it? Okay, so go up there and look and say, which one is cos squared minus sine squared? If I see cosine minus sine squared, that's right here. That tells me that this is the same as cos 2 theta. That's what the formula is, but there's no theta here. All right, theta in this case is pi by 4, so it's 2 pi by 4. So this is cos of pi by 2, which we know is 0. Okay, this one's a bit of a giveaway. Obviously, it's the tan formula. Okay, and so if you think of this as being theta, then this is tan of 2 theta, except it's not theta. It's pi by 6. So this is tan of 2 pi by 6, which is tan of pi by 3, and we know that's root 3. Okay, let's try this one. Here our theta is 5t. So do we have a formula that's 2 sine theta cos theta? That's this one here. So I know I can change this to sine 2 theta. But again, it's not theta, it's 5t. So this is sine of 10t. Okay. So um, these are some uh, of the double angle identities. Let's see if we can use it for a question just like on the last, uh, the last lesson. It says, given an angle in standard position, so let's draw that, with this terminal arm in quadrant 4. So the standard angle looks like this. And cosine is 2 over 5. Using Pythagoras, you're going to find this is root 21. Okay, and we're now supposed to give what is sine of 2 theta. Well, we only, you see, the problem is we only know anything about theta. This angle that we're given here is theta. It's not 2 theta. We can't double it because we don't know what the angle is. We just know some values of theta. So to do 2 theta, we're going to use this identity we know these two things are equal. All right, and why do we want to use that? Well, you know what these two are. I know that cos theta is 2 over 5. I know that sine theta is negative root 21 over 5. You see, I know what sine of theta is. I don't know what sine of 2 theta is. Okay, so now we can multiply this out. We're going to get 4 root 21 over 25. Okay, make sure you remember this is 2 over 1. Okay, let's try B, cos of 2 theta. By the way, like I always say, pause the video and try it yourself first. Okay, so now that you've tried it, cos of 2 theta, we have three options. Which one do you think we would use of those three? My personal preference would be to use this one because it only has cosine in it, and that's what we were given originally. So I'm going to write 2 cos squared theta minus 1. That's the formula. And what is cos of theta? Cos of theta was 2 fifths. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times 4 over 25. So this is going to be 8 over 25. And if I want to subtract, I have to make this 25 over 25. So this is negative 17 over 25. 
Same question as last lesson. Which quadrant is 2 theta? In other words, the double angle. Which one is it in? Well, you see that sine is negative and cos is negative. So the answer would be quadrant 3. Since sine of 2 theta and cos of 2 theta are negative. All right. Let's prove an identity. So we're going to prove an identity, and you can see there's some double angles in here. So that tells me that would be my first step. We're going to get rid of those double angles using our identities. Okay, so let's do the sine one first. I know that sine 2 theta cos theta. I have no choice for that, so that's easy. But cos of 2 theta, I, I'm not sure which one to use. Which of the three should I use? Okay, well, there's a couple of clues here. We want to end up with cotan, okay, and you know that cotan is cos over sine. So I think what I want to do is I want to write cos 2 theta in terms of cosine. All right, now do you see why I did that? I, I want to keep a cosine up top there. If I use the sine, then I'm going to have sine in the numerator. I don't want sine in the numerator. I want cosine in the numerator. Okay, so simplifying this, I get 2 cos squared over 2 sine cos and you can see that the twos will cancel, and so will one of the cosines, which leaves me with cos over sine, which is equal to cotan. And then we're done. Okay, let's try one more. So you're looking at this and you're trying to decide what's What's more complicated? Well, the clue here is I see the double angle. Usually, if there's a double angle, we're going to use that to try to um, change things up. So let's write this as cosine over sine. And let's write this as 1 over sine 2 theta. Okay. So let's change my double angle. So this is now going to become 2 sine cos. Okay. So typical of, a, of an identity, our first step was to change the format using an identity we know. Cotan becomes something, cosecant becomes something. All right. Then I see a double angle and again I change it using what I've got. And now I get a whole bunch of simplifying. This is 1 over 2 sine squared, which happens to be where I want to end up. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Okay, last question of this unit. Solve. In other words, find out what x is. Okay, um, well, I have a double angle in there. I think I want to get rid of that because this one is a single angle. So let's use our identity to change sine of 2x. That's 2 sine x cos x. All right. And let's multiply by a half. So I just get sine x cos x minus cos squared x. Well, at first glimpse, that doesn't look too good because I still have two trig ratios. Okay, so what do I do? Well, maybe I can factor somehow. Do you see there is a cosine in both of these terms? So I'm going to factor out a cosine, and that leaves me a sine x minus cos x. Okay, so that means cos x equals 0, and 
sine x minus cos x equals 0, which means sine x equals cos x Do you have a light bulb? Where have you seen sine x equals cos x? Well, if you remember doing this before, if we divide both sides by cos x, we end up with tan equals 1. Okay, and where is tan equal to 1? It's in these two quadrants. Where is cosine equal to zero? It's here, so the reference angle is going to be pi by two. So what are my angles? Pi by two and three pi by two, pi by four, and five pi by four. Okay. Hmm, I don't have any homework written down here. Well, I'll have to add that later. Okay? It's probably just the next lesson in the textbook. All right, if I, since I haven't written that down, just go to the next lesson in the textbook. I guess it's 7.6. Okay, we can discuss that in class.